Hi, I'm Stephen Levy from Heat Outdoors. Today we're going to review our brand new Shadow Crystal Heaters. Now these are infrared panel heaters. It's important to make a differentiation, although they are waterproof, they could be mounted outdoors, but because they operate with what we call long wave infrared, they're much better suited to an indoor environment. Now these heaters are something very, very special. If you look around the internet, you're going to see panel heaters, indoor heaters, using infrared heat. These heaters, they're panels in terms of they're flat, but they're made of glass, number one, so they look amazing. And number two is they achieve a temperature that a normal panel heater won't heat. So a conventional panel heater will go along the wall. It can't go to much more than 70, 80, perhaps 85 degrees, because the bottom line is you're going to burn yourself. So at that kind of temperature, they're going to heat the room in a very similar way to a conventional water-filled radiator. What we have here is something entirely different. This glass has been through a very special process. It's called a pyrolytic process, where the surface of the glass itself is coated with layers of atoms that turn the glass into a heating panel. I know that sounds crazy, but this glass here is only a few millimeters thick, and in itself, it's a heater. Now, I'll demonstrate that to you in a second, as we'll be using a, a heat gun so you can actually see what the temperature is coming off of it. But it's an amazing product, which is loved by architects and designers, because within most building projects, it's something very, very unique, something that's going to meld into the background, and something that you can use, especially with the clear panels, in settings where any other heater is going to be really, really obtrusive. You've got a heater here, which in a historic setting, um, is going to be loved by uh, conservation officers and people who don't want to clutter the building but have what they call a counterpoint style of heating, i.e. something that's ultra-modern in a building that's really, really old. So brilliant in that type of setting. Undoubtedly, these units look amazing. And if you imagine them in a home setting, you've got a room that you've built into your house, perhaps a conservatory, an extension, a loft conversion. There's no heating there. How are you going to heat that room? You either extend your existing boiler and, and try and do something with that, but that's messy and expensive. Using infrared panel heaters like this gives you an amazing heat source. It's really economical and they look phenomenal. So you imagine a heater like this, either a white one or, if you can see here, a clear see-through glass. Or above my head, we've got a hanging unit. It's exactly the same as these. We can use any size, but it's hanging on really thin wires. And again, that will suit long thin rooms where you want to have something hanging over your head and it's going to give out a tremendous amount of heat. Now what I'm going to do now is show you using our heat gun exactly what kind of temperature this is pushing out because I'm sure in front of the camera they just look like cold white or clear panels. So I have in my hand here a laser heat sensor. It's going to tell me the surface temperature of whatever I pointed at. Now this looks just like a cold white piece of glass. If I put the sensor on and turn it on and then take a temperature reading, we've got 170.2 degrees. Now, this has been turned on for 15 minutes since we set up to start filming. That's a lot of heat, and at that sort of temperature, we're giving out real infrared waves that are come, are come out and going to heat you as well as the air in the room around you. When you've got a normal radiator that's only going up to 80, 85 degrees, as I said earlier, that, all that is doing is heating the air, and that air rises and goes up to the ceiling. This, you can put on the ceiling, like the heater above me, and it'll push the air, sorry, it'll push the heat down to you, not the air down to you. The obvious question to ask is, with these heaters giving out such a tremendous amount of heat and achieving a surface temperature of 180 degrees, what about the wall? What about the ceiling behind it? Surely that's going to get damaged. The answer to that is, it won't get damaged at all. The heater itself has got two layers of glass. The front layer is the one that's got the special coating on that pushes all the heat forwards. There's then a layer in between which acts as a buffer and another piece of glass behind. Now that stops the heat coming out the back and pushes it all forwards. To prove that point, and to do it in one take for you, we'll do another shot of the front, 174 degrees at the moment. I'll then immediately do a shot of the wall behind it. It is 32 degrees. That's a massive te temperature differential between the front and the back. Behind this heater, it's completely cold. The wall is its normal temperature. All the heat is getting pushed forwards. And that's another reason why these units are so economical to use. In practice, how do we use the shadow crystal heaters? Well, we've got a range of sizes. They range from the one above my head here, which is 400 watts. 
the one on the wall here is 600 watts, and then this one below me is a kilowatt. We also do a 1.3 kilowatt in the glass version. So we've got a whole range of sizes which are suitable for all different types of environments. Generally, because of the heat of the surface temperature, we're going to recommend mounting above 2.3 meters. So no hands are going to be going near it, no one's going to be touching it, and then you've got an, an amazing heater. In terms of control, because they use relatively low power, they can be plugged into any conventional control. There's 101 different types of thermostats, that, that, some of which come on simple plug sockets. You plug them in, tell it what temperature you want, and the unit will then heat the room to that temperature and switch yourself on and off automatically. That being said, we also offer our own options on the website. Please have a look at them, see if they're suitable for your type of setup. The final question you're going to want answered is, how many heaters do I need for the sort of space I've got? Now, a lot depends on factors like insulation, if you have any air movement in the, in, in the room or the building where you are. But as a rule of thumb, we're looking at a one kilowatt heater is going to heat about 15 square meters. So approximately a room that's maybe three and a half or four meters by four meters um, in length and width, one of these heaters is going to be heating that quite comfortably. Now, you might choose to have two heaters half that size, one on each wall, perhaps. You might choose to put one heater like this in the ceiling right in the middle. That's also going to provide a lot of heat in a really nice balanced way. So it's really down to the shape of the room, whether you're hanging the heater like above or whether you're putting it on the walls as to how you're going to want to make up that amount of wattage that you're going to need. In summary, this really is state-of-the-art infrared heating at its very, very best. It will make your home look amazing. Architects will love it. What's not to like? You've got a wafer-thin piece of glass with a special coating on it that turns it into a heater. It's emitting a lot of infrared heat. It'll heat a room really, really effectively. And as I say, I've said a hundred times, they look amazing. This is what I choose in my home. Thank you.